So, the Gospel of our Lord, right? Mark chapter 13. It's a new church here, so we start a new Gospel. We get Mark this year. And we get chapter 13, which is a little weird, actually, if you read it through all the way. The whole chapter 13 is about what? What did this seem to you to be about this morning? As I read it to you? What is Jesus talking about? The end times, right? We think of this as the apocalypse, the return of Jesus. It's the end of all time, right? This chapter, actually, in Mark chapter 13, has been referred to as the little apocalypse because it's a little picture of what the end times is going to be about. It's not like Revelation where we get this full-blown picture, but Mark gives us this snippet. And does anybody know what happens in Mark chapter 14? What's the next thing that happens in the Gospel of Mark? Oh good, we'll get to that in just a minute. <laughs> so we get this snippet of the end times, but did you listen this morning as I read it? Because Mark seems to be the quintessential middle child this morning. And those of you that are middle children know exactly what I'm talking about, right? What does the quintessential middle child do? They keep the peace. It's proven that the middle child is the peacekeeper. They talk to both of the other children on either side and try to make the family happy. And if you read the Gospel of Mark, the 13th chapter, you can see that. In Mark's day, there was probably two, if not more, ideas about what was going to happen at the end times floating around. And Mark, almost like magic, weaves them together into one chapter to completely just confuse all of us. If you look at it, right, the beginning part of it, talks about the return of Jesus, and it is an imminent return, right? When these things happen, it'll be the time, and it's going to happen now, it's going to happen soon. And then the next part is Mark talking about, we're going to have to wait on it. We're going to have to dig in, we're going to have to watch, we're going to have to keep awake and keep alert and watch for Jesus' return, right? It's that Already not yet. He's saying that it's going to happen now, but it might happen sometime in the future. So as Christians, we get a little bit concerned or a little bit confused about what it is we're supposed to do. Because nobody knows the day or the time or the hour when Jesus is going to return, right? So why should we worry about it? Because it's going to happen sometime. It might not even happen in our lifetime. So why should I be concerned about it? But Mark is telling us we absolutely have to be concerned about it. It's something we need to think about every day. And if we don't know when it's going to happen, and it can happen sometime along the way, why wouldn't we take our time to worry about it? Right? How many of you are concerned about something that's going to happen in the future that you have no idea when it's going to happen? Probably quite a few of us, actually, if we stop and be honest about it. But how many of us wait on something to happen? How many of you have ever had a loved one deployed to service? And what do you do expectantly, every day? Wait for their return. Right? It's not something that you have to think about. It's just something that you do. Because it's part of who you are. We wait for Jesus to come. And it shouldn't be something that we haphazardly do. Because Jesus is going to come to us. And if you go to Google, you can get a countdown, I'm sure, on how many days, hours, and minutes are left until Jesus comes. Right? Jesus is going to come as a baby of angels. And that is that what Mark is talking to us about this morning and waiting? And Jesus is going to return to us, which I've had a conversation this past week with quite a few people. It's, it's a little bit concerning to me because at the end of the Gospel of Matthew, Jesus promises what? And lo, I am with you always until the end of the age. But we're waiting for Jesus to come back. He's here. Why are we waiting for him? Am I the only one that? That's a little bit of an issue with that. He said he's always going to be with us, but we're waiting for him to return. Right? Is Mark talking about that return? Is Mark talking about Jesus coming to us as a baby in a manger? Is Mark talking about when Jesus comes back to us on the clouds to take us all to herald and be with God for the rest of eternity? Trying to keep the peace between those two of an imminent return of Jesus coming back today or Jesus coming back tomorrow or someday in the future? Or is Mark telling us something completely different? I think Mark is telling us something completely different here. 
But we read this chapter and it seems to be out of place because in chapter 14, Jesus goes to start the Last Supper, praying in the garden, trial, and being crucified. And I don't think it's a coincidence that there's four words used here in the, in the 13th chapter of the Gospel of Mark that are then again used in the 14th chapter of the Gospel of Mark. What does it say? It says, Jesus says to the servant, you don't know when the master is going to return. It's at evening, or at midnight, or at the cock crow, or at dawn. Now, after staying on the Burkhart farm, I know that there is a difference between when the cock crows and dawn. <laughs> I don't know where those cocks get their ideas, but they start crowing at 3 o'clock in the morning and just go, oh. But I wondered about that when I read that. It isn't that cock crow at dawn, but it's a different time, really. The cock crows when it wants to, or on a set kind of schedule, and then dawn comes. But are these four arbitrary time periods, or is it something that Mark is trying to point to something for us? Because Jesus' advent, Jesus' coming, is something that happens many times. Jesus comes to us as a baby in a manger. And I keep pointing underneath the altar because one of the congregations I served in the past had a manger underneath the altar. That's why I keep pointing. Right? Jesus comes to us as a baby in a manger is one advent. But the advent that Mark is pointing to is not that. Jesus is going to return to us again even though he is always with us in spirit because he told us he's going to do that. And that is not the advent that Mark is talking about this morning. There's a third advent when Jesus comes and the heavens are shaken, and it's darkened, and the temple is shook, and all of heaven and earth are connected in one point. And it's exactly what Mark is pointing to us this morning. It is evening, it is midnight, the cock crows, and it's dawn. Because in chapter 14, we start the journey from Jesus to this point to the cross. And Jesus meets with his disciples and they sit down for a meal. They sit down for the Last Supper. And when do they do that? When it is evening. And then Jesus, after the meal, goes out and he goes to the garden to pray with some of his disciples. And at what time is it? The middle of the night. Midnight. And then the next morning he's scuttled off and is on trial. And Peter denies him. When? The cock crows. And then at the morning he is delivered to Pilate to be crucified. Evening, midnight, cock crows morning. I don't think it's a coincidence that Mark uses those four words in chapter 13 and then uses those same four words again in chapter 4. The advent of which Mark is pointing us to, which we need to be focused on this season as we await the coming of a baby in the manger is the fact that Jesus' advent is when he was hung on that cross and God's love was completely poured out for each and every one of us. The point when the heavens were shaken and the earth was darkened and the temple curtain was torn in two because Jesus brought us God's love. And that's exactly what happens with this baby in the manger. And without the cross, Jesus' birth and Jesus' second coming doesn't mean anything. Without the outpouring of God's love upon all of humanity, it doesn't mean a thing. God died so that you can have his love. And that's the advent that Mark is pointing us to this morning. The fact that Jesus loved us so much that he came into the world and died so that we might have eternal life with God. That's the advent that we need to focus on. That's the advent that needs to shape our lives this season. Not to berate people and beat them up because of the things that we're doing in the world. But to wait upon that long-expected Jesus, the baby who comes to us in the manger, who died for you on a cross, and has promised you and will come back to take you to be with God for all eternity. So focus on the Christ who gives you love. Focus on the Christ who gives you life. Focus on the Christ who came so that you may always be with God. And give that Christ to the world as we wait for the baby to come. Amen.